Hi, Ray Smith on chapter 8 now of the Real Jazz Pedagogy book. This is dealing a little bit more with swing rhythm. I'd like to illustrate some things. I made the point in chapter 7 video, and if you haven't watched that, you should probably watch it first. But <clears throat> I made the point that there's nothing that happens on the upbeat area. It all happens on either the downbeat or almost on the downbeat. Sometimes it can happen when it ricochets off the downbeat, so that there's only really four places that a note starts. And it's either on the beat, or which is ba, or ba, almost on the beat, or ba, ba, bounces off the beat, ricochets off the beat. Uh, that's three out of the four places that are all about the beat. It's either on the beat or really close on either side of the beat. Uh, the only other place that it can happen is on the exact upbeat. You're saying, wait a minute, you just said there was no such thing as an upbeat. Right. At the quarter note level, there is no such thing as an upbeat. But now we're thinking in the long meter. Again, I've described this in chapter 7. You might want to refer back to that first if, if you haven't listened to it. But uh, we always think from medium on up in swing, I'm always going to think in the long meter. So basically in cut time. And the long meter says that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So at the half note level, Yes, there's an upbeat because that's either beat two or beat four. It's down is one, up is two, three, four. So now there's a there is an upbeat in the half time, in the half, in the uh, long longer meter thinking or the cut time feel, but not at the quarter note feel. So all the, I'm going to illustrate how all the rhythms either fall on a beat or almost on the beat, or they ricochet off the beat, or they're right on the and if they have to be written on beat two or beat four. And this is hard to get the band to do at first, but it doesn't take too long. Uh, in the book, I'm going to use the examples and actually play the examples in the book here. So this is example one, some different ways to think about swing rhythms. This is what I call the most maligned rhythm in jazz. It's always played wrong. Quarter note, dotted quarter note, with a tie to a quarter note, and then a quarter note. So it's like one, the way I look on the page is one and two and four. One and two and three. Four. Well, uh, we're going to think this in cut time. Uh, uh, uh. So, the, the, I think the best thing to get the band doing is to play the simple version of it. Half note, two quarters. Then I can go. And I'm just barely earlier on the second note. But where do those notes fall? Is on the beat, then almost on the beat that's kind of the relationship of the upbeat to the downbeat it's almost like a grace note or like a flam that a drummer would do most of the time I hear this rhythm played which is completely incorrect in other words, there's a long wait to the second note, and then no waiting for the third note. So in, in the simple version, one, two, and, one, two, and, now we're just going to barely beat two. Uh, the other thing you can do, of course, is do the subdivision with the tongue. Not quite fast now. Uh, so that is useful, I think, and especially with the younger band, it might be uh, really useful to subdivide triplets. There is this whole, of course, uh, idea that the way to get swing happening is to subdivide with triplets. And with younger students, I do that. Uh, just for example, let's see if I got some examples down here somewhere. So let's say that I'm playing this. <laughs> That's my piece. Now, if I subdivide with the triplets. Uh, 
I think that's a great idea. I have my students working in the Lanny, ha Lanny Niehaus books, Jazz Cassette for Saxophone, and I'll have them do that with every etude for quite a while, where they subdivide the eighth notes with the, with the tongue, the triplet eighth notes. And then they subdivide, uh, subdivide mentally after that. And then ultimately, I, I moved to this idea that it's either on the beat or almost on the beat, or on the, uh, right on the end. Um, so this uh, has really helped me to solve a lot of rhythmic problems in the band. Uh, looking at example two. You could rehearse it as. And we just barely beat each of those notes. On, almost, almost, almost. So I'd rehearse it on, 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 and then on, almost, almost, almost. You need to hear it with the, the click. I don't think you're hearing what I'm beating on my, on my knee here. Let me get a click up here. A little faster than that. Okay, so here be the straight half note. Now almost. That's what's going to swing. You could try to subdivide that with your tongue. And that can also help. Then it goes. And it goes into the head, but it's a little crazy when it gets a little bit faster. Uh, of course, the subdivided triplets, you want to be or eighth notes, you want to be sure if you're subdividing eighth notes. You also think of that way, and then it's... I want to be sure that they subdivide. If you do that, you're subdividing with eighth notes that are swinging. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, example three is similar if you had... Rehearse it as. Now it's ricochet on. It's ricochet. On. <laughs> That's too fast. Ricochet on and on almost. Uh, 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 almost. Ba, 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 ba. So. You get the idea. You can subdivide with the tongue, but you can also think this way where it's on the beat or it's almost on the beat or a ricochet's off the beat. This, I think, is a huge key to developing sight readers. I have all my students do a lot of sight reading with me in lessons, and they do, we, we actually do this. We think in the long meter, then we have to be able to see where the downbeat is in the measure, and then where's the middle of the measure. Downbeat, middle, downbeat, middle. And then we have to be able to say, okay, which notes are on the beat, which notes are ricocheting, which notes are almost on the beat, are there any notes that are on the and, which would be two and four. And that's amazing how that starts to straighten up the pulse, the feel, and the rhythmic, rhythmic accuracy in sight reading. Phenomenal. Uh, let's go down and look at example four in the book here. So I've got and ricochet on almost and ricochet on almost and ricochet badu da two two more ricochet and badu da badu da those are also ricochets so with here we go with the pulse three yeah. <laughs> When I have bands play that without this kind of instruction, it almost always sounds somewhat equidistant, like... <laughs> what I usually get. That's very inaccurate. You listen to the... Some of the notes are longer than others. They're not equidistant. <laughs> Very different. And I think you can get there a lot easier by thinking this way, that the notes only come in four places. Uh, <clears throat> here's another one. This is the one I was playing a while ago, so we can get the G natural. But now you can hear the metronome. Ready? Yeah. 
Sorry, those G sharps are wrong in there. So, ricochet on, almost. By the way, we have these little notes that are almost notes. But da ba da Those little notes need to be snapped to the downbeat for good rhythmic feel. ba ba da da ba ba da ba ba da da No. ba ba da da It's kind of arrhythmic. ba ba da da It snaps to the beat. Listen to that again. Okay, good. Um, students often get stuck on ties. I find this is a big deterrent to getting rhythmic accuracy in the big band. If you get stuck on a tie, it does. Uh, here's here's uh, the next example. What number is it? Number six. because we're stuck on ties. The ties really, how long are they? Not that long. So avoid getting stuck on ties too long and it'll really help. I'm thinking of this as ba ba do ba ricochet, ricochet, ricochet. Uh, <clears throat> Here's one more example seven. And, and a ricochet, and a ricochet on, and up. Ricochet, almost. I should be turning on and off my mic, so I hope I'm not blowing it out here. Here's number nine. This should be on, almost, and, ricochet, on, almost, and, sorry, on, and, ricochet, on, and, almost, uh, <laughs> almost, snap it, but da bo da and, ricochet, and, ricochet, on, ricochet, on, almost, da da almost, ba da da and ricochet. Ready? <laughs> I didn't play with the notes that are written there, but I'll play it one more time. Number number nine. Ready? Not again. Not accurate. Ba 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 is what you always get from the kids, and I did it where you're more equidistant. Ba 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 ba. No, it's ba 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 ba. Long, not that long. Right away. Now it ricochets. Two again. Notice how I how I snap that. You don't want to play. Too lazy, not rhythmic. Whatever it is. Uh, <clears throat> We got one more here, I think. Uh, this is uh, number 10, example 10 in chapter 8. So this is on, almost, ricochet. Oh, oh, I'm illustrating with this one a different concept. What if it's way slower? We're going to say this is so slow that I'm not thinking in the long meter. I'm not thinking in two. Okay, so this is number 10 example, slow. Two, ready, and... <laughs> So when you're at a slow tempo, the point here is that notes that might usually be a ricochet turn out to be almost on the following beat because I'm thinking in four now. If I'm thinking in cut time, that ricochet. But if I'm thinking these are quarter notes, almost. That dotted quarter, which would have been a ricochet note in faster tempo at slow tempo, is actually an almost on two note. 
Obviously, this is going to be much more helpful if you're following along in the book and you're actually looking at what I'm reading. You'll understand much better what I'm talking about. I do want to just finish this with one thought about springboard notes. Uh, for many years, I've taught the concept of springboard notes to my band, and it makes a really large difference about getting the band together. And this is a little bit in the last part of Chapter 8 here. I, this is what I would call the cannonball example that we listened to. I guess that was back in Chapter 7. This is from... Uh, I'm going to turn off the metronome for a minute. Okay, this is about the tempo that, close to the tempo that Cannonball plays us. It's on the kind of blue album, the So What solo. And I think it's a great example of almost and then springboard notes. So. So what I mean by springboard note, this is the note at the front of a particular part of the figure that if you hold it long enough, it springboards the whole figure to swing. All the other notes take care of themselves. Also, if you don't hold it long enough, it springboards the whole figure to failure. It will never be, you can't make up for it. There's no way to redeem yourself if you don't play that note long enough in the first place. So, for example, this rhythm. If I go. If I play that note too short, the whole figure will be uh, ruined. If I play, then I've got every, the, other, the other two notes after it tend to swing because I've set it up in a good way. Um, so in the whole figure, I got one. Almost, almost, almost on springboard note, springboard note, springboard note, springboard note, bop. One. How come I'm not getting my octave key here? One. Now if I do the opposite. Not long enough, that's extreme, but I hear a lot of examples in between there where it still isn't swinging. You have to put that length on those notes. Now, four places where springboard notes tend to hit. One, first of two notes, and I've got this illustrated on page 39 here. Two notes before a rest. Sorry, I need to get rid of this. The downbeat is going to be super long. Not. We heard Cannonball do it. Chapter 7, you got to go back to that if you haven't seen it. Uh, <clears throat> then I've got the first of four notes. Or. I got the first note. Da ba dee ba dee ba do dot. The note before the dot note needs to be extra long. That's going to swing if I don't do that. Not going to swing. Also, the first note in a syncopation, which is what was happening at the end of that cannonball figure. The eighth note's your springboard note. If you play that long enough, the other two notes tend to swing too. But if you go, the other two notes tend not to swing. So it happens first of two eighth notes, first of four eighth notes. It happens first of uh, the eighth note of a syncopation figure, and then also happens the eighth note of the do wah. The do part of a do wah is also a springboard. <laughs> now if I play the do short, or too short, not, not long enough, in other words, uh, then it's going to not swing. But if I play that do long, then the wah will swing. When I was a young teacher, I used to say, don't play the upbeat stuff so soon. Play the upbeat stuff later in the beat. Later in the beat. Never could seem to get it to happen. Then I discovered that if I had the students play the downbeat stuff way longer, then it forced the upbeat stuff to come later in the beat, and we started swinging. So I think that pretty well wraps up. Well, there's a couple more examples here, doesn't it? Uh, a couple more examples. 
these are springboard node examples and this is on page 40. I will play these. I think, I'm thinking in the two figure. The do's are going to have extra time. The do dot is going to have extra time. See so if you hear it. One, two, one, two, so I was beating on my knee and I didn't get my hand back. I'm going to play that for you one more time. Two, ready, and one. Makes it swing. If I don't put those times on the springboard notes, one. This is pretty typical. Uh, long again on the springboard notes, one. Huge difference. Same thing, uh, same illustrations on the next part. Two, one, two. Do's get the long notes, and the note before the dot, the eighth note on the downbeat before the dot, super long notes. And then, uh, well, one more time. One, two, three. And I think that wraps up all the examples there in chapter eight, pretty much. Other than, okay, there is some more. <laughs> These rhythmic approaches work in non-swing stuff, too. There's a mambo, and I'm thinking the same stuff. You can see it in the book. It's either on or it's on the and, or it's ricocheting, or here we go, two, mambo. Yeah. Here's the second mambo example. One. Snap it, but it would do about and almost on and and one. Another mambo example. Two, ready. On and ricochet is on these and ricochet on the last knot. Here's in a funk style how I can think, still think these same things. Um, on, almost, ricochet, on, almost, and, see if you hear it. They're bring this speed up a little bit on that. And one, because I have to think, on this one I'm thinking quarter notes because it's written in 16th size. So, ready, yeah. <laughs> Still a little slow. This is something I do with the Temptation and the Four Tops whenever I play for them. One more time. Ready. <laughs> okay, anyway. Hopefully this uh, gives you a little bit of a, a different attitude about how you can handle rhythmic figures in swing. But also it applies, as I've pointed out here, to Latin and funk styles as well. All right, signing off. Uh, join me again for Chapter 9.